Well hello and welcome back. Well at the start of this video there's a short update uh, from the last video where I was called away from the squirrel shoot to do help a uh, new sheep farmer out so uh, bear with it. Go and put the coffee on if you've seen this and I'll catch you later on. Well, it's now 10 to 8. Um, as you can see, I've got changed. I had a phone call shortly after that um, video I did at the squirrel feeder uh, station uh, from one of the farmers where my high seat is at the cattle farm. He's got a neighbouring farmer who's a shepherd and he's been having lots of lambs taken. So he phoned and asked, could I help him out? So quick phone call to that farmer and I'm here now waiting for him to meet me at the end of this lane so I can go and do a site survey and recce while it's still daylight just for safety's sake I don't want to go shooting in the dark not knowing the land I'm on um, so I've got about 40 minutes of daylight left which is uh, plenty for the farmer and I to go around uh, establish the best place to sit in relation to what the wind's doing so uh, tonight with me I've got my 243 with the Pulsar uh, C50 on, uh, not my most favourite methods of shooting foxes with an infrared light uh, but my Thermion's away uh, having some work done to it so I'll make the best of it. Uh, I've had a couple of goes over at the sheep farm where I shoot before in the high seat and had a couple of foxes there um, but uh, still having a few teething problems with getting used to shooting with infrared so let's uh, hope tonight um, is successful for the farmer because I know he's like Graham he's not getting any sleep. Well that's how we left the last video so uh, this thing came from nowhere and uh, there'll be an explanation how it can get around without being seen in the next clip of video. Well, I've waited for about an hour and a half for that thing it came out earlier went in as soon as I drove here and then crept up from nowhere. I had no idea where that thing came from, it just appeared. I don't even get my crosshairs straight, sorry about that. But um, anyway, that's the one that's been causing a problem for Colin, the sheep farmer. Over in the distance there, there's a badger set and it's absolutely crawling with badgers, but not allowed to do anything about those, so that's our fella there, I'll go and pick him up. So there we are, so I've just, just managed to find that in this long grass. Um, it's getting on for about a foot thick, so they'll cut this for silage in a few weeks time and then let it grow again for uh, hay in July, July time. But um, this isn't the one that I saw walking around earlier. That one had a white tip on its tail, so I better get back and sit back on the truck and see if that one's going to come out. Okay, so I've come back to the farm uh, where I came the other night on the hurry up for the farmer. Um, his sheep are over to the right hand side of me. Uh, but the other night I managed to shoot a vixen in the far field. But uh, I know not a lot of people uh, understand what ridge and furrow means. Well, it's an old, I think it might have even been medieval way of farming to drain the land. So I'm going to drive over what appears to be a flat field here. Um, and I know Robin, who shoots over on the uh, east coast of England, it's all flat there, the Fenland, so this would be a good one for you, Robin. Um, this is why foxes can creep up on you. Uh, one minute you see them and the next minute you don't, and the next time you see them, they're about 300 yards away. Well, hopefully this demonstration will prove to you what severe ridge and furrow fields are like. like being on a boat in the middle of the sea this is where it gets really bad and I think it, the, the worst of these furrows are they're almost a yard deep you'll see now if I just keep a straight straight ahead picture and this causes a problem with the foxes because they get in these furrows they can travel a long way without coming back up even if they might not even come back into sight again so where i'm going to go tonight is somewhere between these bushes because i've seen a big dog fox in the next field across just sort of loitering around 
looking for scraps to eat. So I'm going to park up between some of these once I get through this rough North Sea. And uh, we'll get set up there. So you're never too old to make rookie mistakes and I've done a rookie mistake tonight. I was fiddling around with my scope. Noticed this chap coming out in the field. Shot it and then realised I hadn't put the recorder on. So I think this is probably the dog that I saw. Yeah, it's the dog fox. So this is probably the partner to the one I shot the other night. He's in lovely condition. Well, he was. Um, I've just found Colin, the farmer. He's thrilled to bits. Um, I haven't even bothered ranging this, but uh, I'll show you where I've shot him from. That's my car. It's over there. I don't know if you'll see that if I zoom up. Yeah, I've just parked the car in front of that bush so it just breaks the outline, that mine, not skyline. But uh, it's still daylight, it's ten past eight when I shot him. So I'm going to go back, um, hang him up, and then uh, see if we get another one coming out. Well, no doubt you've just seen the fox that I shot at ten past eight. Uh, and like a plank, I forgot to put the scope into record because I'd been busy fiddling around changing the reticles and finding a reticle that would correlate to my Strelock app on the phone just for distances. Now this scope, the C50, I've now set this to the moonlight setting. Um, I see it's still in colour but it's now half past eight so it's just gone as you can see. What gave that fox away is just with my naked eye I could see that there's something in the field. Now, I've shot it just about where the crosshairs are now, so that's 157 yards away. So it's not a huge distance, but don't need to go mental with these things. Get them as close as you can to you. Um, so that was where he was, um, and I can remember that distinctly because in the main picture, the top of that reticle was just touching the hedge line, which is 280 yards away. So we're sort of halfway uh, between me and the hedge. Um, and I was quite impressed with this scope. I said it's still on, still showing on the colour, but it's on the moonlight mode. Um, so it's a great piece of kit. Uh, I'll just see if there's another one. I doubt there will be because I've had the pair now. Um, Colin had seen a pair that had been taking his lambs, so I've put myself between the uh, myself and the lambs. So these foxes have got to come from this way uh, to get to them. So. Matey that I just shot was out here having a sniff around as I'd seen him the previous night I was here virtually in the same place so, and about the same time so they are pretty pretty good timekeepers well he was but um, there we go I'm sorry that he didn't get to see that but you uh, did see what was left of him um, he was in great condition as well we've got a Labrador at the gun shop which is smaller than that fella he was absolutely huge well, coming up is some footage from Keith, uh, one of my customers at the Oxford Gun Company. Uh, this fox was about 20 yards away in the meadow at the back of Keith's garden. Uh, now, Keith was filming this on a par 008, and his next door neighbour has got chickens. So, Keith um, did the decent thing and spoke to the lady who owns the chickens and said, Did you know you've got a fox nearby? And her reply was, Yes, I've seen it. It's only one, it won't cause me any problems. So remember those words, it's only one. Suddenly Paul Daniels has done a magic trick and one has turned into two. Uh, all of these uh, clips were taken on the same night and I've sent this along to Charlie at Field Sports Britain. So you may see this footage again. So two adults have turned into seven young cubs. Now you have to remember that uh, the lady had seen one and it wasn't going to be a problem. So remember those last words. Um, let's hope it isn't a problem for her. So let's get over to Graham's sheep farm and see why we take care of these foxes. There's only one, remember. Won't cause a problem. Right, well this fella is only a couple of hours old. Um, Graham's picked this one from the field where the high seat is. Um, and he's in here safe, safe with his mum now. 
But Graham, as well as the foxes that I try to take care of. All right, Mum, let me put him down. What's the other problems that you're finding with these young lambs? The, the biggest problem is uh, the crows at the moment. Because they've got their young on the nests, um, they're looking for as much food as possible. And so they've been targeting the lambs as they're born. When they're starting to come out, the mums, they, they peck the eyes out and the tongues out yeah. before they're born. So that when they come out, the mums, they're already dead because they've been destroyed by the crows. Um, I did pick one up the other night. Um, well, it's first thing in the morning I picked it up while it was sleeping overnight. It got attacked by the crows and there was blood everywhere. So it was obviously killed um, while it was still alive. Well, the tongue had gone yeah. and the eyes had gone. Well, it's, it's light now at half past four in the morning isn't it? and the birds are awake because I can hear the birds singing. So that's the prime sort of hunting time for these crows out looking for an easy meal. And unfortunately, our little friend down here um, counts as an easy meal to these guys. But anyway, there'll be a little clip of video that I did with Munch last night clearing a few of the rooks nests um the same rookery that we were at this time last year for graham so munch has now got a very sore shoulder and uh, we did have a couple of hours fun so um a, a fruitless evening tonight from the high seat um, there was one fox that i did see way across over in the airfield but um way out of range and certainly not worth taking a shot at so graham i know he's you could probably count the number of hours sleep on one hand that he's had this week um, and it's the same for Colin, the other farmer where I went on the hurry up last week. They're both working very hard. They're both lone farmers. Graham, you've got about 350 ewes here, I think, haven't you, that you, you look after? Uh, yeah, there's somewhere around about that. Yeah. But we are reducing the flock to make it more manageable. Well, so it's just you, isn't it? Um, yep. And I know Mrs. Mrs. Farmer helps out every now and again. But Graham will be here all night. Um, and he'll be here and have his breakfast brought for him in the morning. So thanks very much, Graham, for, for uh, sharing this with us. It's nice that, that people understand that your type of farming uh, isn't a nine to five job. So you're here, you're here all night, all day, um, and bringing these little fellas into the world. So he's going to be safe tonight. Um, otherwise, he'd have been out in the field. Mum's still got the afterbirth. Um, with us so that's again that's another nice sort of uh, morsel for foxes to get hold of so at least we know you've done a good job and he's in safe tonight so thanks ever so much graham right these um mums have got their heads in stocks so that they don't bash the lambs about um, we've had to foster some surplus lambs onto them because their lambs were um taken by the predators as they were being born. So they lost their lambs at birth. That's why they're in the stocks having lambs fostered onto them from but, surplus mums. And is this a regular lambs. thing you have to do? Um, frequently farmers have to do this with the surplus lambs to get them onto other ewes that have unfortunately lost their lambs. Yes, so it's, it happens throughout the lambing and community. I, I can remember last year you actually skinned a dead lamb so the mum of that lamb would accept uh, an, an orphan lamb. That was right, wasn't it? That's probably I did that to one that had um, had a lamb that had been on her and suckling her for two or three days or a week or so. Whereas if they've never smelt the lamb, um, there is more chance that they will just accept one off of another mum yeah. by going in the claps. Yeah. There's our friend the fox. That's come all the way across. This was the first proper night I'd used this C50, so the IR light was all in the wrong place, so uh, that's why it's a little bit sort of uh, sketchy. Well, I've just got over the fence, that 124 yard fence line there. Um, so he's somewhere on, on top of this bank. I say he, I don't know whether it's a dog or a vixen. Um, it could even be a poodle, apparently. Um, but as you can see, I wasn't on the thermal scope tonight, I was on the C50 scope. That was a bit of a nice shine there, so over there, look. A bit of blood there on top of his neck, so that's a good sign. And it's a dog. So there we go. Graham said he'd 
heard and seen one. Um, this fella had come from a good 400 yards away, way over to my left hand side. I could see it running through the sheep in that field. So uh, a brilliant result and I'm sure uh, Graham will be happy. He's got, there's a ewe that's about to lamb underneath those woods where Munch and I went crow shooting or rook shooting last year. So he's asked me to keep an eye on her. So that's one less to worry about with, with this chap. So go back and uh, hot chocolate, I think. So that's one of Graham's water containers. That's 675 yards away from my position. Moving across, give you a better idea of how far across this airfield I can see. That collection of trees is 850 yards away. So everything between me and those trees all the way around is a secure area that's fenced off by the American military. So nobody, uh, no dog walkers, pedestrians can get in here. So. Uh, it just clarifies that there is not dogs in this um, in this land. Uh, anything that's being shot is a fox and therefore a threat to Graham's lambs. Here comes our little friend, Mr. Fox. Again, I was having a few little. Uh, teething problems getting the light set up in the right place but um, you'll get there eventually well this one had a bit of a spurt with adrenaline and anyway, I went down with the second one it's probably already down anyway definitely a fox it's not a labradoodle thingamajiggy so uh, you know it's one out of the way for Graham he'll be happy about that So that was the first one, uh, closely followed up by the second one, both on the same evening. And um, there's a little clip of the fox that I mentioned earlier that was a long way off in the field. You probably just get a glimpse of it moving. Uh, and then after this, uh, there's a bit of footage of Munch with my Benelli M2 um, clearing out some rook nests. I hope you enjoy this. This is Munch preparing to go on exercise room clearing. Three inch magnums. <laughs> Flames and all. <laughs> How's your shoulder? <laughs> what a tart. Well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Munch and I had a great couple of hours there. Uh, thank you for Graham and Colin for giving us an insight in how hard you blokes uh, work during the lambing season and also the reason why uh, we all go out and shoot the foxes and crows. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next film. Cheerio!